In today's video, I'm going to explain the difference in fat loss from Orange Theory Fitness or high intensity cardio and walking and which one is better for you. In today's video, we're going to talk about cardio. We're going to talk about the different modalities of cardio to help you lose body fat. And I want to help you understand the big picture. So we're going to talk about things like Orange Theory Fitness or high intensity interval training. We're gonna talk about low intensity cardio. Perhaps we'll even talk about moderate intensity cardio. I'm gonna explain it to you all here so you can understand it, help you visualize it a little better so you can get the big picture. Now, the question came from right here on my Instagram direct message. I love to answer your questions. If you would send me them to my direct message, I can either answer them directly or I can make a video if it's a topic that I feel will get a good view. Curious as to your opinion on fat loss from walking versus orange theory type heart rate 84% or higher maximum or the afterburn effect, thanks. So I originally began dieting for competition to get shredded, I'll show you some videos here, around 2007. And during that time, it was very in vogue to start doing high intensity interval training. The research showed that by doing high intensity interval training, which is all out effort for short periods of time, followed by a full rest recovery, and then you repeat that. It showed that you would burn a lot more calories in a session like that than you would during normal steady state, right? Something like jogging or walking or bike riding, right? So it became very in vogue. And in fact, I was doing two to three total hit cardio sessions per week during my diets when I would be dieting down. So does it work? Absolutely, okay? Essentially what you're doing is you're burning a lot of calories in a short amount of time So what I wanted to do is break it down for you here on the board during a typical orange theory fitness class of 60 minutes You're gonna burn between 500 and a thousand calories now That's a big variation, but a lot of that's gonna come down to your ability to handle that type of training It's very difficult for anyone that's not done high intensity intervals. Think of it this way Imagine just running out your door as fast as you possibly can like life or death How long could you run at that top speed? 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds, okay? So that's the idea behind interval training. You're going so hard, so fast, that you're turning on these metabolic pathways that are just going to produce lots of energy. Now, the idea behind high intensity interval training, like you do at Orange Theory Fitness, is that you don't only burn the calories during the class, which would be between 500 and 1,000. You can actually burn up to 15%, which they call the afterburn. It's actually called excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Because your body is focusing on burning so much calories through the use of oxygen, it's actually creating an oxygen debt. And so it does take a while, maybe a couple hours, for your body to recover from that. In that time, you can burn an additional, let's say, 15% of those calories. So if you burn up to 1,000 calories, 15% more would be 150 calories, right? So you're getting the benefit of burning calories after that. So why do I talk about walking? Why do I talk about low intensity steady state cardio as being better for fat loss? Well, first of all, it comes down to what your lifestyle is, what your approach is, because HIIT cardio might be the answer for you. What does your day look like? What does your life allow you to be able to do? If you can only fit in 30 to 60 minutes and you can go get in an orange theory class or something like a boxing class or something where you're gonna burn an extreme amount of calories, you're gonna have a lot of fun, time is gonna fly, then certainly that is a great option, okay? However, I wanna talk about what's happened to me over the years and my theories and how they've changed because as I told you, I did a lot of HIIT cardio in my early days in bodybuilding. And I'll show you some pictures and videos here. Um, and now I've switched to completely doing low intensity steady state. So first things first, high intensity cardio. You can't just do it anywhere, okay? You need specialized equipment like a spin bike. You need to push a sled. You can run sprints outdoors. So there is a risk of increasing injury. There is usually a skill associated with high intensity cardio, okay? You need it to be instructor led. Okay, so if you're gonna to go to an Orange Theory class, you're gonna have an instructor that's teaching you. Nothing wrong with that. However, what is the value for me of low intensity steady state cardio? I can walk right out my door, walk right down the street and just take my dogs for a walk and use that as my cardio. Now, ultimately what matters is this right here, your basal metabolic rate, right? So this is your basal metabolic rate. And as you eat some food, you're adding calories to your day. And as you do some cardio, you're subtracting calories. What we need to do over the course of an entire day is be in a caloric deficit to lose body fat. Now, that obviously, as you see when you spike your calories up here through meals, that's gonna require you to pay attention to your diet. I don't want anyone out there to think that you can simply walk, you can simply do hit cardio, you can simply go to a boxing class and expect to lose body fat. In fact, a lot of the research shows that people that go to these classes, they think they've earned a big meal and they go out and eat big. 
Well, if you do that, you might just be offsetting the work that you did there. Now you might get some cardiovascular benefit, you might get some muscle hypertrophy benefit, but if your goal is to lose body fat, then ultimately it's gonna come down to paying attention to those calories that you're taking in and the calories that you're expending through exercise. So why do I promote walking? Why do I talk about it? Well, I did nothing but walk to get this physique you see on the screen right here, okay? I did nothing but walk. Now granted, I definitely tracked my diet and I definitely exercise. My preferred method of exercise is bodybuilding. I love resistance training. I love going in the gym for 45 minutes, an hour and a half, a couple days a week, pumping some iron and trying to build muscle. That's what I enjoy. Hit cardio, as I found through my contest preps, actually makes that process very difficult, okay? Lower body training is already tough enough. Now, if you add hit cardio to where your muscles are sore and not recovered, and your CNS or your central nervous system is constantly fatigued and you're not recovered, those workouts begin to suffer. If your workouts suffer, you're more likely to get hurt, you're more likely to lose muscle. My focus has always been on putting on muscle and losing body fat. The perfect balance that I found is through low intensity steady state. Now, low intensity steady state burns a lot less calories, 200 to 360 per hour by walking. Now that's flat walking, right? So that's just getting outside your door, putting your shoes on and going for a nice stroll. Also, when you're done walking, guess what? There's no epoch. There's no excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. You stop walking, within a few minutes, you're back to baseline. But there is an association with high intensity cardio with hunger increasing after those sessions. You're going to be hungry, nothing wrong with that. But just understanding that if you're not being super accountable, walking won't have that same impact. In fact, I find that walking helps me feel less hungry, okay? If I do my cardio first thing in the morning, I'm not hungry immediately. I'm hungry, you know, within an hour or two of that. However, if I do a high intensity workout first thing in the morning, I am starving all day. Now, the real trick with walking or low intensity steady state cardio, as I showed you here, is that you can walk flat and burn between two and 350 calories, say, per hour. However, if you get a treadmill and you put it in your house, like I do, well, now, I can do cardio whenever I want, in the morning, in the middle of the day, in the evening. I don't have to get in anyone's way. I can literally walk up the treadmill and into the shower or go back to work. And I can increase the intensity, okay? Low intensity steady state implies, walking implies that it's very easy, but I promise you, if you did my walking workout the first time you started walking, you would not make it to the end. It's very difficult, okay? That speed and that incline increase over time is what allows me to burn more calories, sometimes as much as 500 calories in an hour session. Now, if you guys would like to see a full day of eating video, I've been putting one together for a couple days now, so let me know below um, if there's any specifics of what you'd like to see. If you have any more questions about fat loss, about muscle building, please put them in the comments below. Please send me your Instagram direct messages. But this is why I prefer walking because I can walk throughout the day and have less impact on my joints, on my health, on my well-being. Now, I'm 46. I'm a lifetime natural bodybuilder. And to be honest, I just don't like doing HIIT cardio anymore. I find it decreases the quality of my workouts. Does that mean you shouldn't do it? Hell no. I did it 10, 12 years ago and I enjoyed it, but I just found a better way for me. It ultimately is gonna come down to diet, it's gonna come down to your method of burning calories, and it's gonna come down to your consistency and how serious you are about your goals. All right guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow.